Imagine if somebody drove a car all over your lawn and left track marks everywhere. You would not be happy. And that's kind of what a lawn disease can do. It doesn't have to just destroy your lawn. It can just really make it look bad no matter how much fertilizer you put down or how much love you give it. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to understand when you have a disease, how to treat it if you've got one, and possibly how to prevent it in the future. What you're looking at right here is my lawn, and it actually has a disease right now. And it's not just a couple of damaged blades, there's a lot more problems that are brewing. And if I leave this alone in about a month, this lawn is going to suffer heavy damage. So this is a perfect example of why you need to be able to understand the signs and symptoms of disease to make sure it doesn't get worse. Figuring out if you've got a lawn disease or not is almost always done by a visual diagnosis. That just means look at it. So let's start with one example. What we're looking at here is not a disease. This is an example of some lawn mower damage that's happened to this turf. Next example here is in fact a lawn disease. Now this looks a little bit different than the first one, but let's go through a few more examples before you really get the gist of understanding why this is a disease and the other one wasn't. This is another example of another kind of lawn disease. You can see this one's really widespread and most of them have the capability to do this kind of damage. Next example is in fact a lawn disease. You can really tell this because the dots are not touching, they have a little bit of an orange hue, and in the center of the dots you can see kind of a webbing or a milky froth type connection between the grass blades. That's a sure sign that we're looking at a lawn disease. Here we've got one that's a little bit different. Look closely at these spots. The grass is very dead in the middle of each of these. They're not circular in shape. They're kind of far apart, but they're very, very dry. This is in fact pet damage from a pet urinating on the lawn. And this is a good example of something you're gonna often see that people may think is a disease. But the telltale reasons it's not a disease is it's not round, it's really not spreading, and the grass is completely and utterly dead in the middle. There's no life or webbing or any type of fungus. It's just burned up. Our next example is a little bit different. This one's got healthy looking dirt in the center. It doesn't really have any burned out grass. And as we shift over, we'll see another area of it not too far away, but it's the same type of symptoms. But in this case, this is actually mower damage and it's just caused by scalping or a tire turning too tightly. Now those examples that I showed you were pretty extreme. Most of those diseases would be really easy to diagnose. But here we are back at my lawn. Now this looks all right, but let's take a closer look here because something isn't quite right. And as we zoom in, you're looking at it. You see lots of good grass here, but what are all those strands or fibers between the good grass? Those are in fact a lawn disease, or at least the results of one. And this is why it's so important to be able to diagnose a lawn disease, because oftentimes they're not going to wipe out a whole section of your lawn. They're going to do just what you're looking at here. Now this one is likely red thread, but it's still a problem because what it's doing is wiping out about 10 to 15 percent of my grass, and it's really giving all the grass an overall bad look. Now that we know we've got a lawn disease, what can we do about it? Well, the good news is, in the old days, you had to use a lot of different products, but nowadays there's new technology that make treating just about any lawn disease a one-step process. And what you're gonna do is use a product called a fungicide, and that will kill the disease in your lawn, and most often you're just gonna need one treatment per season. Now here what we've got is a top product made by a company called Syngenta, and it's called Headway G. So this is a good single product that I'm gonna put down and hopefully it'll be my only treatment for the year. Now that we've got our fungicide, how do we put it down? Well, you'll notice right away that I put long pants on. I'm also gonna wear a breathing mask that just is for filtration so that I'm not breathing any dust. And I also prefer to wear latex gloves as well to just protect my hands. Now, fungicides are not particularly toxic. I'm just taking precautions with this because with any product you wanna be safe. And this stuff goes down just like any kind of lawn fertilizer. It's easy to handle and it just pours right into the spreader, which I've already preset to the correct settings that were on the bag from my model spreader. And here's a close up of the product. It's very fine. And in fact, you put it down in dry conditions and you can either wait for rain to go in or you can run your irrigation system. It only needs a little bit of water to activate and go into the soil. Now I'm gonna put the product down with my spreader, making even passes in my backyard. 
Now this portion of my yard does have sprinklers, so when I'm all done, I'll water it in for just a few minutes each zone to get the product activated and working. Some final thoughts on lawn diseases. This is a tough topic because there are a lot of different kinds of diseases and it can be sometimes difficult to figure out what's going on. But don't focus on what disease you have, focus on whether or not you have a disease. And the last point is, if you're not sure and you want to put down a fungicide anyway, that is okay to do and a lot of people do that as a preventative measure because it's just a safe, easy thing to do and because diseases can be difficult to diagnose. So that's up to you if you want to do that each year. The other alternative is to do what I do, which is I just try to monitor my lawn closely and if I see anything that's too weird, I make the determination if it's a disease or not. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you had any comments below, I'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe to this channel for more videos coming up.